Hi everyone, my name is Maggie. I'm in high school. I turned 16 years old and not so long ago, I had a boyfriend. We've been together for six months and his name is Eric. He has a best friend named Jason. Jay is a cool, nice guy, but I've always noticed that he treats me with a kind of disdain. My friend Liz had a theory that he was either jealous of his best friend for me or backwards, me for him. And he recently sent me photos, and it opened my eyes. Now I will tell you what and how. You do not forget to leave comments under the video, like it, and subscribe to the channel. So, with my boyfriend, we are doing well. This is my first relationship, so there is no real experience. Eric is a couple of years older than me, but very funny and sociable, often jokes and always helps me with any problems. When he said that he wanted me to meet his childhood friend, I was very happy because it means that he is ready to introduce me to the environment. I did the same, introducing him to Liz. I suggested that we go on a kind of double date to introduce Liz to Jason because neither of them were in a relationship and I thought it would be cool if they became friends. But it didn't work out the way I wanted it to, despite the fact that Eric was warned of an easy isolation of the other. The evening was awkward. Almost everyone was silent except Eric, and I just had nothing to say, looking at my friend and Jay. Jay was so displeased that his mood rubbed off on Liz and I. As for my friend, she did nothing but yawn or stare at her phone. The double date failed, and after two hours, we decided to leave. I was relieved when I put my friend in a taxi and Jay drove away. I discussed it with Eric, but he just shrugged. He said he was sure that everything was fine. It was just that our friends didn't agree on their interests. But it seemed to me that the reason was not even because of her, but because of me. I noticed that Jay had been looking at me all evening with, to put it mildly, contempt. And during the conversation, Eric mentioned more than once that he often spends time with me. The only thing that his friend had said was that with the appearance of girls in a friendship, all sorts of shit always happens. It sounded like an open accusation against me. I took it to heart, although Eric told me not to worry. From that day on, I tried to avoid Jay in every possible way, and Eric didn't insist. But we still had to cross paths. My boyfriend was supposed to have a birthday, and I wanted to throw him a cool party. He didn't have any other close friends besides Jay, so I called him and told him the time and place. He thought my idea of a party was fake, but he promised to come only for the sake of his friend. Liz only came because I asked her to. My parents weren't home at the time, so I arranged everything in my room. Cooked food, the boys bought drinks. I made a selection of movies in case we wanted to watch something and discuss it. Isn't a movie the best topic of conversation? Everything had to be done in a cozy atmosphere. And when the guests came, I greeted everyone with a big smile. Jay gave me his trademark sideways look. Eric kissed me and hugged me, and Liz, as always, kissed me on the cheek and asked where the food was. As you can imagine, the first half hour passed in silence. I made a toast, but no one else wanted to. Then Eric offered that we watch a film. We chose a comedy, but we watched it in silence, without laughing once. Then I pulled out board games and urged everyone to play. Only Eric agreed. My tension grew, and apparently the booze had an effect. I was rude, asked Jay to be more friendly, because he was at a party in honor of his best friend. But he said that it was my party, and only mine. He got up and started to leave. Then Liz said, Let him go. He doesn't even belong here. Then Jay flared up. He called it the most boring night of his life and grabbed his jacket. Despite the fact that it was snowing outside, he went out without it on, just holding it in his hands. Eric asked, Are you having problems at home again? But the man was just rude, saying that he was not going to talk about personal matters in front of strangers and left. Liz freaked out, packed up, and left. And for the rest of that evening, Eric calmed me down. I didn't understand why Jay treated me like that. My boyfriend kept saying it was about him, like that's the way he was. He said that Jay was actually a great friend and person, 
but just like everyone else, with some issues. I saw Eric off and went to bed, then decided to text Jay. I wrote that whether he liked it or not, his friend and I were together now, and I wasn't going to give the guy a choice. He needed to treat me with respect. He messaged back and said he didn't care about us at all. I went to bed feeling psycho, and I couldn't sleep. Then, somewhere in the middle of the night, I got a message. He came home drunk again. I need your help. And then, two photos followed, where I saw a man swinging at someone with fists. It wasn't until later that I realized it was Jay's father. It was already four in the morning, but despite this, I took my mother's car and went to his house. I was surprised that he texted me. Was it because Eric didn't answer, or was Eric already there and they needed more help? I arrived at his house and ran in, opening the door abruptly. I heard screams. I followed the noise and opened the door to the bedroom where the man was beating Jay. He was lying on the floor and shouting, Dad, stop it, stop it, Dad! But he did not listen and swung his fists. I shouted at him to leave him alone, but the drunk man looked at me and shouted, Is that your whore? and walked towards me. I had no choice but to grab a vase lying on the table next to me and hit the bully on the head. He lost consciousness. Exhausted, Jay ran up to me and said, Call the police. The police came and took the man away. It turns out that he often came to Jay and beat him while Jay's mom was in the hospital. She and him have been divorced for a long time, and he doesn't leave him alone. When the man was taken away, Jay and I were left alone at his house. How did you know? he asked. I told him what happened, and he said that he must have written to me by mistake because I was the last person he corresponded with. I wrote to Eric, but I was wrong. I'm sorry if you got hurt, he said, but I interrupted him, said that this would remain between us, that everything was fine. He thanked me again for coming so quickly. He could have killed you. I said, and Jane nodded in agreement. From that moment, everything changed. He became more friendly and even began to communicate with me. We kept that day a secret from everyone, and now Jay treats me completely differently. My name is Mary, and about a couple of years ago, I met the perfect guy, and of course, I fell in love with him right away. I was willing to do a lot for him, that at some point, I even refused my parents to be with him, and he deceived me, and very cruelly. That year, my family and I decided to celebrate American Independence Day in a big way. We invited our neighbors home and planned to sit down at our house and have dinner after an active party. My mother works as a cook, and my father runs a small veterinary clinic, Sonia, my older sister, is in college. When I started high school, she was just graduating. We are completely different, both in appearance and in spirit. I'm more restless, as my father says, just like my grandfather. But my sister is more calm, neat, clean. We even have different figures. I'm more whipped, not to say that full, let's say in shape. But Sonia's figure can only be envied. I call her a witch because she eats everything and doesn't get fat. Not like me. I have to limit my appetite. Otherwise, I will look like my grandfather as well. So, on Thanksgiving Day, my friends and I decided to walk around the city, watch the festivities. Our mayor gave us a really cool holiday, hired artists, including circus performers, performed on the main stage of the city. Later, we got hungry and went to the burger shop. I took a cue and went to the toilet. When I got to the place, I saw that there was a guy standing there. I got angry and told him that this is my place. He looked at me like I was nothing and said my name wasn't there. I was so angry that I was on the edge, bought a burger, took my time, caught up with him and smeared it on his face, ketchup dripping down his chin. Oh, it was a big fight. Anyway, we ended up exchanging numbers and he asked me out. Yes, that's how it happens, it turns out.
I didn't hesitate to ask him to meet me that evening, but what's the big deal? After all, a holiday is just a great occasion. Eugene agreed. He came to pick me up a few hours later while I was changing in my room. There were already a lot of people in the house, and I wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. The door was opened by my sister, and he was confused. He did not know how to introduce himself. Sonia ran into my room and said that some guy came to see me. I put on lipstick and went downstairs. Eugene apologized for taking my sister by surprise, but I reassured him that it was a small matter and didn't need to be bothered. You have a big family, he said, and I laughed in response and reassured him, explaining that these people are not all relatives, but neighbors. Then he asked me to tell him about my family. My parents and my sister, I thought it was cute, much attention. We had a good chat that night, and he walked me home and asked if he could meet me again, and I said I could do it tomorrow. The next day was a day off, and he came to my house with flowers. I saw two bouquets, and I had a question, and he said that the second one was for my sister for yesterday's awkwardness. I quickly brought the bouquet, threw it on her bed, quickly rattled that it was for her, and ran away. So we saw each other almost every day. I liked him more and more. His cologne, his eyes, his voice, I liked everything. A week later, I suggested that we go to the park to relax. Then we went for a ride on bikes and roller skates. We had a fairly active dating life. I liked it. I also liked his modesty. He, like a well-mannered guy, came to my house almost every day and brought two bouquets for me and my sister, so that she would not be offended. I told her that she hasn't had a boyfriend in a long time. When Eugene and I were about to go to the golf club, my parents protested out of the blue. My mother protested that I was away too often. I told her that I was in a relationship now, and she said that sometimes it would be nice to spend some time with my family. You have Sonia for that. She's in. She doesn't leave the house at all. It may have sounded rude, but it was true. It's not my fault that I'm the only one in a relationship, even though I'm younger. A scandal broke out at home. At this hot moment, Eugene rang the doorbell. My mother opened it, and he too flew in full. He stood like a fool with flowers in his hands, and my mother scolded him like a little boy. I was so embarrassed in front of him that I started shouting at my mother. Sonia came to my mother's defense. I started yelling at her and my father immediately jumped in and said that I was now under house arrest for a month. If you were like your sister, there would be no problems, he said, and that was my last boiling point. I exploded. Oh, right, so I'm worse? I knew you liked me less. Or maybe you don't like me at all. Sonia is perfect, but I'm not. If you don't need me, then I'm going to live with Eugene. You're not my family anymore, I shouted, slammed the door, grabbed the guy by the hand, and left. I don't know how long we were silent, sitting on a bench in the park, but I was shaking with anger. When it was quite dark, I said I wanted to sleep. Eugene offered to get a taxi for me, and I said, aren't we going to your place? He was confused and said he thought I was joking. But how could you joke with such things? I was in shock. I was not clever, and I fell into a stupor, not knowing how to understand it. You're my boyfriend, and I thought it was okay if I stayed with you for a while. Didn't you say that you live alone? That your parents are still away? I can't go home, I explained, and Eugene looked at me and said timidly that he didn't think it would be like this. I didn't ask you to give up on your parents. After all, I think you jumped to conclusions. We haven't actually met yet, he said. I felt myself getting mad again. I yelled at him so that the whole neighborhood could hear. But we never even kissed, he said. It seemed to me that he was just stalling for the moment, trying to make it special. I realized that we were going to have a long conversation. It turned out that I forced myself on him, as he says. Moreover, he only spent time with me because I invited him myself, and it was inconvenient for him to refuse. And in general, he liked Sonia. That's why he brought flowers for her, too. That's why he didn't shrug me off to be close to her. That's why he didn't kiss me. 
he had feelings for someone else, and it turned out to be my own sister. And I hurried everything, as they say. I invented it myself. I believed it myself. I told him to go to hell and never show up on my doorstep again. I came home almost in the morning, all broken, in tears, and in a bad mood. No one in the house was sleeping. They were looking for me. When they saw me in this state, they asked me what had happened, and I told them in one breath and started crying again. Sonia said that the idiot was blind if he hadn't fallen in love with me. It was nice. Since then, I have not rushed things and no longer threatened to leave the house.